What's up guys? I'm Matt and this is Hidden Light. And today I wanna to talk about inspiration. You can kind of look at this as a response to a video that Ted Forbes put out not that long ago. Uh, we'll link that up here. You can go check him out. Uh, Ted and I are kind of buddies and I, you know, occasionally will comment on his videos and occasionally he'll talk about me in his videos. And so I figured we might as well return the favor. So Ted, this one's for you. Inspiration in photography has its place, right? Photography is a creative medium for many of us. You know, what started as documenting the world, right? It wasn't necessarily thought of as an art form, has now become an accepted art form, which I can appreciate. Fine art is a good thing. It's a good way, for, as photography is a good way for us to express ourselves and get things out there. And uh, I think one of the goals of photography should be to move the viewer, right? And to me, that's what art is, is anything that moves you. So inspiration, right? I have a couple of different thoughts on inspiration in photography. My first thought, and the thought that I learned growing up, doing photojournalism, doing uh, event photography, doing sports, which is kind of where my background was, was inspiration is for amateurs. Professionals get to work. There's someone to attribute that quote to. I don't know who it is off the top of my head. If we find it, we'll put it here. Inspiration is for amateurs. Professionals get to work. Yeah, that's like, I don't care if you're expired. You expired, inspired. You got bills to pay. You pick up the camera. You go get it done, right? I think that there's a tie-in with that, with something that's a little more modern and a little bit less like kicking your ass. And that's the idea that creativity is a renewable resource. And I get this one from Chase Jarvis, who I've been following since the dawn of time. Uh, he's got a podcast these days. It's one of the ways, things that I listen to and looking for inspiration. And he basically says, the more creative you are, the more you express yourself through any creative endeavor, it could be playing catch, it could be hanging out with kids, it could be any number of things, right? The more you are creative, the more creativity you then have to spend or to use. And I think that if you are in a professional sort of environment and you're always being creative, you're always shooting, then you're much more likely to have something to have that well to draw on and continue to be inspired as you make more work. Now we all have those days, right? One of the things Ted talks about in that video is, you know, have you ever had one of those days? Ted, I'm with you. I'm basically having one of those days today. Uh, one of the things I like to do on video recording days is uh, sit down and record an old news segment. Uh, link that up here. But I can't do that if I don't have internet. So I spent four hours, five hours this morning diagnosing my internet troubles in our building. And it just, it's so hard to just get inspired and get after it and go make videos when you've just spent five hours pounding your head against the literal brick walls of whatever this building's issue was today with technology, right? So I totally get it. That being said though, you can either let the not feeling it win, or you can force yourself, grit your teeth, buckle down and get it done. And what I find is about maybe five minutes into that process where you're like, okay, setting up the studio, getting the lights squared away, getting everything, you kind of start to feel that energy, right? You, the more you do it, the more you feel it, the more you feel it, the more you want to do it. So I get it, but at the same time, the I'm doing it, we're here, you and I together. I'm making a video, you're watching a video, maybe it'll inspire you to get out and do something interesting with your life. Uh, I do wanna talk about sources of inspiration because when you're having one of those days, right? Or when you've been maybe stuck in a rut, I don't necessarily think as a rut is a bad thing. I tend to confine myself to ruts on purpose using creative constraints. And this is a huge thing in creativity and photography is if you wanna force yourself to be creative and like flip that switch in your brain when even maybe you're not really necessarily feeling it, instead of giving yourself every camera in the case, 
like, you know, I own a camera store, or instead of giving yourself all of your lenses to choose from, or narrowing down even further, instead of giving yourself all the ISOs to choose from, just pick one, pick one camera, one lens, one ISO, one subject matter, uh, one light source, something. Constrain yourself to one thing and then go make images using that. And I like to set myself a minimum, right? So what I'll do, or a maximum sometimes, but what I'll do is I'll say uh, what I used to do when I was in college and I wasn't really feeling it, but I, I had to get out and shoot something is I would take a challenge for myself. And I would say, okay, today I'm gonna treat my $5,000 SLR like a disposable camera. And I'm gonna set it to F11 at 1 125th of a second at ISO 400, tape the focus in a fixed focus point, tape over the back of the camera, and I'm gonna go shoot 27 exposures. And that's gonna be my roll of film for the day, because I didn't, I didn't have any money when I was in college, so I couldn't actually shoot film. Even though looking back, man, film was so much cheaper then than it is now. And even processing, ugh. When I was in college, you could go to CBS, Walgreens, one hour photos and get your film done for like six bucks in an hour. Ah, those were the good old days. Anyway, I would set myself creative constraints and force myself to go do that thing. And even if the images all turned out like shit, I got out of the house or dorm room and went and made something and was able to express myself within the limitations. Um, and I used to do that a lot and I haven't been doing it quite that way recently. Instead, I'll pick one camera for the year, like this year it's the eight by 10 and that's my creative constraint. Anything you want under the sun, but it's gotta be this. So for eight by 10, I know if I wanna take a picture, it's gonna take me 15 minutes to set up. And then maybe, hopefully, <laughs> if the photography gods smile upon me, I can get something together. But even the process of setting it up becomes ritualistic, it becomes part of the creative experience, which is great. Uh, other sources, you know, external sources that I draw upon, I'm big into YouTubes, obviously. You know, there's a lot of cool people on YouTube. We'll, we'll just do a link list to all some, you know, some of the cool channels that I watch. I'm always hunting for cool new channels, but we'll give you a nice list there in the description. Uh, I like to watch movies too. Really well lit, well shot movies are like a huge thing for me. I will be the guy that sits there, is watching a great movie, uh, watch the whole thing start to finish. I'll start the movie over and pause on a specific scene and figure out how it was shot, how it was lit. How could I do something like that? I don't often try to recreate them, but just the seeing what someone else is capable of doing in lighting, especially the way that cinematographers or whoever the people are that light movies, I don't know what they're called, sorry. Um, how they hide lights or how they fake a light source by like, just providing a lamp back here that's like, oh yeah, that must be where that light's coming from. And you, you can look at it and go, it's not, it's close, but I, mm, but that's definitely not it. I love stuff like that. Um, photo books are another great place to get inspired. Photo books tend to cost a lot more money than YouTube videos. So I don't necessarily go after them quite the same way. Um, there's one that's actually on my list right now that I just talked about in the old news segment was a Magnum Photos contact sheet book. I don't have that one, but I really want it now. I'm like stoked on the contact sheet vibe. So I'm gonna go find one of those and I'm sure you'll all see uh, an unfortunate number of contact sheets from me because I have film from decades and uh, may, it might be time to mark up those, you know, get your sleeves and then mark them all up and you know circle them and cross them out and show the crop and then photograph those and do those um i did that actually for a photographer eric o'connell who we had we had his 9 11 work up in the gallery i'm pointing behind me because behind this wall is the gallery and uh that was a really cool process so the whole contact shoot vibe i'm really feeling that right now but yeah, books, movies, videos. Ted Forbes talks about music. He's got a huge music background. That makes total sense to him. 
it doesn't make any sense to me. I, uh, taking music and creating visual inspiration from that is really difficult for me. So, it's, uh, plus the music I kind of listen to is um, brutal deathcore, I think is how you would describe that. And that doesn't necessarily translate itself very well to the kind of photography that I do. It's, I don't know, it's a little different. I'm curious what you do think or feel about inspiration and its role in photography or art in general. If there's something you do to get inspired or if there are resources you recommend to others, put those in the comments. I know a lot of you are the kind of people who watch these videos and then don't comment. Participate. We'd love to have you. Comments are cool and it helps the YouTube algorithm, our almighty overlord, tell people that these videos don't suck, which means people can watch them, which means I get to make more. So uh, yeah, that's my general thoughts on inspiration. Leave your thoughts in the comments. We'll see you in the next one.